Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to show you guys around our winter watering system that we have set up. We just purchased this land a few years ago and trying to get water set up and getting fenced and everything has taken us a while. But now we can finally take advantage of all the grass and areas that we can't farm and that we can't hay. And it's November, believe it or not. It's like minus five. It's the 15th or 16th of November. And there's no snow on the ground, so we have to have water for our cows because they usually eat snow, but there's none to be had. So we had to set up a watering system. So we're, we'll show you guys today what we have set up here that's gonna work in the cold without any power around and with minimal interference. So we have our big trough here. The, water, the cows are gonna be able to come on the other side of the electric fence and drink out of here. And if you come over here, the water line comes up from the pump here and we have the float, just electric float. When the float goes down, turns the pump on and water comes up, of course, the float will turn the pump off. It's inside the cage here, so even if cows get curious and get their head underneath, they can't interfere with the float or with the hose and knock them out and cause any issues here. Down here, we have this red hose coming off of the drain of the trough, and we'll show you where that goes and why we have that set up in a minute. But let's talk about the solar panels and the charging box and everything that we have over here. So up on the hill where Mrs. Crackpot is standing, Mima Crackpot, sorry, are two solar panels. They are 275 watts each. The sun, of course, isn't ideal in the winter, so we're not getting nearly that much out of them, even with the nice sun that we have today, but they should be sufficient. Inside of our battery box here, we have everything that we need inside of this box. We can move it around with pallet forks. We can set it wherever we need to. It's all contained in one place. Cows can't hurt it, even if they do manage to get past the fence. The worst they can do is step on wires. So we have four deep cycle six volt batteries set up in series to give us 24 volts. That's the way the pump works best, the charger works best, the solar panels, everything. 24 volts is the best. We have a fairly sophisticated charge controller that has its own user interface over here. Uh, on the screen here, it'll show us that the solar panels are seeing sun. There we go. The solar panels are seeing sun. Of course, we're blocking it with the lid right now. So they're charging at 34 volts, and uh, I can't see now. 3.7 amps. It says the batteries are nice and happy. We are getting power into the batteries. We're not losing right now. The load is on, and it'll show us when the load is running how many amps the pump is actually pulling. So this controller also, we can set things so that it um, turns the pump on and off with the sun or with the timer or a combination of the two. We can set all those parameters. Uh, we can turn things on and off manually, whatever. It's actually a very sophisticated system and has worked very well for us for the few years that we've had it. So it all sits in this nice box. The uh, pump hooks up and unhooks very simply and the cables for the two panels are out the back. They hook up and unhook very simply. So the whole thing is very portable and very functional and quite flexible in what it can do. So now let's uh, meander down into the dugout itself and see what we have set up with the pump and this red hose. So because it's winter, this uh, two inch line that we have here is more or less sloped back to the pump so that every time the pump shuts off, that line will drain completely so it can't ice up. Now, I don't expect Mima to come down here with me, so I'll just speak louder. So down here in the dugout, like I said, this red hose is attached to the drain of the trough, right? And so it comes down here, and we have water flowing. And so what that's doing is that's keeping the trough constantly moving. It's not going to be able to have a layer of ice forming on the top. We always are going to have water slowly coming out of it and then being pumped back in. And at the same time, the water that's coming out is going to constantly agitate the area around the hose here. And that's going to make sure that there's always water that's above freezing going around this hose so that it can't freeze solid. Um, this is just a piece of hose we had laying around, so this extra nozzle is uh, not on purpose, but it works. So the pump, I'll pull it out for you quick here. This is a 24 volt centrifugal pump. Nothing really fancy about it. It floats on the surface, has a suction screen. Very simple, very robust, and not particularly expensive. This pump uh, pulls, will push a lot of head. We're probably pushing, what do you think, 14 feet right now, 12 to 14 feet. And I can't really even cover the end of that hose. Water just sprays out. I can't actually stop it. So it's got a lot more potential yet. The way that we have this set up with the drain back line, uh, it's 
running about 45 minutes ish between pumps and it only pumps for about four minutes. So it's not a whole lot of time spent pumping and a lot of time with water just trickling out to make sure that nothing, uh, nothing's gonna freeze up. So that's the water system. So in a moment here, we'll uh, head back up on the hill and Mima and Papa will tell you about the fencing system that we have set up here. Hi, it's uh, Mima and Papa Crackpot again. We're gonna be talking about the electric fence that we've added to this water system that Tyler was talking about. So um, what we have is just a, a very simple poly electric fence uh, with two reels. These are geared reels. So the reel actually spins at three times the speed of the handle when you go to wind it up, which makes it nice when you're winding up long distances. That's why we like these ones. I do wish we had the wider ones that had the, the double hooks on them because these ones always tend to flip upside down on us. So we're just hanging them upside down. Um, there are two different kinds. Doesn't matter which kind you get. They're about the same. What we have gone with over here is we put corner posts in, seven foot wooden posts in the corners to take the stress because the cows might rub on them. And then we've used rebar for all of the interspacing and just the screw in or screw on insulators. We've done that here as opposed to the step in ones this time, simply because this is going to be here for probably a month. So by the time we go to pack this up and take it home for the winter, these things are going to be frozen in. So they're probably going to spend the winter here and I'd rather sacrifice these than the good step-in posts. So that's why we've gone with the rebar as opposed to step-in. It didn't take much to put them in. They're only in about six inches. So that's not a problem to get them in. They went in very easy. These are just screw-on insulators. They screw on very easily. It doesn't take much to hold them in place. And then they just hold the wire in place. We have two wires. They're both hot. The reason being we're in a low spot, so we have a good ground connection for the cattle and it, we've had the snow so we've got good moisture. I wanted to make sure that the cows got zapped no matter what they touched, whether they try to reach under for grass or try to reach over. I wanted to make sure they got zapped so we got two hot wires and then through the ground. We do just have our Patriot, a small, it's about a three-quarter joule electric fencer or energizer. Um, we could just put up another system and add it to his electrical system that he's got here with the, the batteries but we wanted to make sure that we have sufficient power for the pump before we start drawing something else off of that one. So we just set up our simple handheld solar system for now. If we do this again and we make sure that the, this is a sufficient uh, power for the pump and extra, then we will just bring another energizer over and hook it straight up to that. This, uh, we have a Gallagher fence tester and currently it's not working, of course. It's too cold. It's too cold. So uh, it was, when we were testing it a few minutes ago, it was saying that the fence was running at about 0.4 amps. Point 0.4 amps at 8.2 kilovolts. And what is that in English? That means you probably don't want to hang on to it. That's probably all I can say. I don't, I'm not an expert on what the numbers mean. But it's a fairly short distance. It only goes around the dugout. It's not a long distance, so it's fairly, fairly active. And the cows are trained well enough now that they'll come over and look at this, and they'll even imagine the sounds. They probably don't even have to hear it. They'll just imagine it, and they won't touch this. And if they do, then we'll get the the, the eight joule charger and bring it over and hook it up to that big system, and then we'll give them a jolt. Um, insulators on the corners. So going around the corners, like I said, we put in seven foot posts or uh, four to five inch, or you know, five to six inch seven foot posts, and we just have hammer in insulators, just put a nail through them. And this is another one's got two nails in it, and it's a pin in. You can use high tensile wire with those or the, the little poly wire, whichever, it doesn't really matter. That's It's a simple system, very, very simple. Is that little bit of contact with the wire on the post going to make a difference? It doesn't make a difference unless you have a lot of rain and the post itself actually gets wet inside, not just outside. That's the only time that you're going to have a problem with literally having contact with the post. I know that some people even get away with stapling their wire to the post with two inch regular fencing staples. And that's probably fine unless you get right into the hardwood of the post and the hardwood is still wet and then it may ground out on you. It may, it may not. And even if it does, it's not going to take a lot of the energy out of it for, from you. So it's not that big of a deal. 
Same with grass. If you have grass touching your fence, it's not going to make a lot of difference at all. It's going to take such a small amount of your overall charge that it's not going to make any difference to what the cows feel. You have anything to add? Is it easier than setting up a barbed wire fence around dugouts? It is much easier. From the time we got here this morning to the time we had the trough full and the fence set up and charging, it was an hour and a half. Will this last longer than a barbed wire fence around a dugout? Um, depends on the situation. As long as you have it electrified any time that the cows are here, it will last longer. The problem with all those other fences is that if it's not electrified, the cows rub on the corner posts and people put them too close to the dugout, the ground is too soft and the posts just move in. They always get loose. And once the cow, and also the frost, with all the, because you're in a high moisture area, the frost starts lifting your posts out. And so that's another thing. It actually starts moving the posts in towards the water. Is an electric system like this more or less expensive than a barbed wire fence that you need for the same area? Well, if you're going to buy just an electric fence or for just this small of an area, it's going to cost you more than it would for the barbed wire fence for the same small area. But then you can move this one from one dugout to the next or do your half mile fences to, to do uh, paddock grazing, which we did all summer long with these sanded fencers. So it's multi-use. You could also run a a paddock fence off of this line like we could go east west north or south and actually break this up into smaller areas if we wanted off of this same fencer so that part of it makes more sense than buying a whole bunch of barbed wire fencing material because that stuff is really expensive nowadays like these posts right here are about fifteen dollars each these ones are about 75 cents they've, they've they've gone up i think they're about two or three bucks now oh okay and there's uh, the insulators are about a dollar a piece or maybe 50 cents a piece. Uh, step in posts are about seven dollars each, but you can reuse them so many times, it's so much more convenient. Okay, right. if anybody has any questions about either the watering system or electric fence that you see here or anything else in the video, feel free to drop us a comment and we will answer whatever we can. Thanks for watching.